So my story is entitled The Architecture of Our Lives Design, Pre-Design, Art Design, Pre-Design, or Both. Right? So Collins defines architecture as a structure or design of anything. Here I am, 32 years ago, born Errol St. Aubin, Jr. Brown, and I consider myself here to be a piece of historical raw material. Much of the first part of my life was spent being molded by this woman, my great-grandmother, Linda Golding. The drive I have to help people, the love and compassion I try to show others, can be very heavily credited to her. Most people that knew me would say that something great was being built, that I was on the right track. By 1999, after 19 years of being groomed by my mom, three grandmothers, my dad, and a rigorous regime of Bible thumping, yes, knock, 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 that was me at your door on Saturday morning, interrupting your morning cartoons. I was off to, morning, I was off to Mohawk College uh, on my way to becoming a CEO of my own company. Right, big E I N C, entering the land of aggressive takeovers. Well, two and a half later, years later, I was a dropout selling car stereo at the feature shop. And you can laugh. I still laugh at it sometimes. I was a dropout. But seriously, seriously though, what went wrong? I had a plan, I had a design, and it all looked good, but how does a clean cut Bible thumper like me get caught up in the quick, easy, quick, easy money of retail? Well, <laughs> From bad to worse, I meet this guy named Kwaku. Yes, his real name is Kwaku. And he introduces me to the world of ecstasy and hardcore party lifestyle. By this time, I've gained over 100 pounds and know that it's not Pepsi, just Pepsi in the bottle. Three sketchy years plus five new death experiences later, and happy child number one. January 4th, 2007, Aubin Brown. As you can see, he's super ecstatic about being brought into the world by two parents with such deep issues. He's my number one alarm bell. As I took a sober and look around, I began to wonder what I had created, not to be outdone on my birthday, August 19th, 2007, Aiden Brown. Now, put your calculators away. I'll save you the trouble. My boys are seven months, 15 days apart. But <laughs> that was the look on Aiden's face when he found out. <laughs> so, Trying to avoid the, avoid the pain of my own guilt and embarrassment, I gained 85 more pounds on my previous 100, and when walking, climbing, even sitting was painful and tiring. From age 19 to 26, I went from 36 waist to 58. With the drug withdrawal, my shame, the added stress of having my first, my first child was something that was battling her own substance abuse issues, I began to fall apart. I began to lose it. So, after making arrangements for my boy, I left the country. I moved to Quebec. <laughs> <laughs> Between the crazy Quebec driving, squeaky cheese, and being constantly assumed as Haitian because I can speak French, I started to get my stuff together. <laughs> Francois Olivier Brochu, aka Fob, took my, my multi level marketing virginity in 2008. As, as a result, I started learning about the world of personal development. The mess I had made with my material called My Life was beginning to change shape. Countless audiobooks, seminars, and thousands of pages of notes later, I find myself in. New York, warrior camp. Four years of having people put me through things that I would flee from in day-to-day -day life. Throw in a 5K price tag, and they had our driving to the middle of the bush, and somehow it made sense. I met some great friends and some stuff actually worked, so. <laughs> Why not pay 6K and fly to California? Wizard camp, new levels of enlightenment and dehydration waiting. No, I'm not trying to look cool in that picture, I'm just, really hot and thirsty. <laughs> Jokes aside, and a tremendous amount, I learned tremendous amounts on both trips, and the true me was beginning to emerge. So, summer 2011, up another notch, the mastery of self-expression. Man, I was expressed that weekend. I think the picture speaks for itself. It's interesting to note that all the courses that helped me the most was this one, but I wouldn't have found it weren't it for the other two. So to see the randomness continues. My newfound confidence and my own, with my own battle with weight prompted me to quit my job and become a full-time promoter of the Vaisalus 90 Day Health Challenge. It's currently the largest of its kind in the world and has helped North America drop over 20 million pounds in just under three years. This picture was taken among 10,000 new friends in Atlanta. So, my brother and I worked together and we started by naming our Vaisalus promoter group Team Upward and Onward. But thanks to our brother's passion for personal training, and my love of business, Team EIO became a full-fledged corporate boot camp, health and fitness, and personal training company on its own. The money is great, but the true reward comes from watching people's lives change for the better. 
Being motivated to walk the, walk the talk keeps me thinking about my own health all the time. This is the result of my first challenge I did in February. Since then, I've reduced my body fat even more and my energy is through the roof. Really, it's hard to believe that I used to be almost 400 pounds. Both of my sons have speech delays and my older son has some undiagnosed behavioral issues. So being a single father has shown me firsthand the epic lack of resources that are in these areas. At the end of the summer, I was experimenting with some ways to create a cost-effective private service. Many kids wait years on a waiting list and some never see a specialist. I continue to push my comfort zone. <laughs> continue to push my comfort zone to refine my structure and present the most authentic and detailed version of myself that I can with the tools I have. The polar bear dip last New Year's Day gave me a huge lesson in mind over matter and a smaller lesson in shrinkage. <laughs> so, I asked myself, how would I have served humanity tearing companies apart? Was all this pre prescripted to happen or am I just making the best out of the mess I made with my wholesome upbringing? For example, does this man really have any concept of what he's creating? Or is he seemingly or is he his seemingly mindful tapping merely an allusion to a deeper reality? In my opinion, I think it's both. Michelangelo says in this quote, I saw an angel in the marble and I carved to set him free. Every block of stone has a sculpture inside it and is a task of the sculptor to discover it. I feel there are multiple sculptures awaiting inside the marble of our lives. Whether you agree scripted or unscripted is up to you. I don't think it matters as long as we're satisfied that the end result is your own personal masterpiece.